That's okay. So, anyway, we can get started with Dutch, Afrikaans, and German. So, this map right here, the green one is guess the country. German. Yes, amazing. Uh, the red one is France. The blue one is the Netherlands, not to be confused with the one with the letter B, which is Belgium. And, and so, then there's the little tiny country that no one cares about called Luxembourg. <laughs> <laughs> or no one knows. Who's dude, dude, dude. What country is that? It's, it's, it's a little country named Luxembourg. <laughs> oh, Luxembourg. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, so it's really over on the other side. Where? What's that white piece like, in, like right in the middle of the Netherlands? I mean, the. This one? Yeah. Oh, good question. Probably just water. They have a lot of water. Uh, which will get us to... What kind of words do you expect to get from like a language? Generally speaking. A word. Nouns. <laughs> sure, nouns, yeah. All the parts foreign. of speech. It's foreign. But more specifically, do you get the sort of words about the sort of terms that they have in wherever the language originated, right? So, in Dutch, for example, you can look at the Netherlands and you just start with the fact that they have a giant hole in the middle of the country where there's just water, right? So, you're probably going to have a lot of water-related words, which makes sense. So, you can just start out with words like polder, right? Let's put that on the board. So, words like polder have to do with water. You know, a, a polder is, let's give you the official definition, a tract of low land reclaimed from the sea or other body of water, as by dikes or dams. And I can actually show you this based on what direction it's going in. Oops. It's amazing. So, a polder, a tract of low land reclaimed from the sea or other body of water. And let, let's take this and compare it to this giant hole in the middle of the country where there's just water. The land next to that they kind of reclaimed from the sea. Give us back our land! <laughs> Alright, so we can go on, go on to the actual important stuff. Language tree, you guys have seen this before, right? Yes. Yeah? Someone show me where German is. Uh, German. Right there. Germanic, the green one. Yeah. Green. So here's German. And you'll notice that there are a whole bunch of places where the word German is there. So there's German, right? You have Middle Low German. Why would you have a Middle Low language? There's what? High German, there's Low German, there's West Germanic, there's East Germanic, North Germanic. And then regular Germanic. And then just Germanic. And, and that one that says Germanic comes from way back long ago. So yeah, you can kind of trace this lineage a long way back in terms of like linguistics. But German German language is right here. And as you might expect, it's pretty closely related to Dutch over here, modern English over here, and also along the way, Afrikaans, which you don't see on here, because Afrikaans is basically just Dutch with some African influences. Because when you know you know how you had like different European nations that were colonizing Africa, right? Yeah. And so the places that uh, the Netherlands colonized, which was, is it now? Uh, places like South Africa, for instance. So South Africa, you have a lot of like Afrikaans, right? And then various other countries in the area. But okay, Dutch, it's amazing. Does somebody want to guess how many words we have in the dictionary from Dutch? Yes. Uh, oh, fifteen hundred. Oh, you're very close. You're very close. There's 1632. Awesome. So you're 132 words off. And there's probably more that just doesn't show up. Now, if you have Afrikaans, right, and Afrikaans came from Dutch, uh, somebody take a guess about how many words you have in the dictionary that are from Afrikaans, that say Afrikaans in their etymology. Uh, 100. Yeah. Uh, maybe 1,000. A little bit less, yeah. 500, almost. 300. And 200 of them say specifically Afrikaans from Dutch, which shows you more than two-thirds of the words that we have that say that language also have Dutch. It's a very strong connection. So this is like an example of very Dutch stuff that you think of. See, windmill, useful for pumping out water. 
as you can see. Uh, tulips, the famous from tulips, and then various other Dutch stuff. Like, so I think that's where we're going to go. Yeah. Why is there a Danish flag whenever it says Dutch? I don't know. <laughs> I apologize. Yes. But, like I said, water, right? So you have a boat. And that brings us into the ah sound. Drawing parallels from last week. When you see water, you say ah, water. <laughs> Amazing. Okay. Anyway, the ah sound, right, in, in Dutch, you can spell it with an AA, which is many instances of how it's spelled. See, advocat. This is a type of eggnog. And it's wonderfully useful for, yeah, that has to do with the projector. I, I don't know how to shift it over. Move. <laughs> do some air bending. Yeah, I think I'll do more damage. Yeah, that's right. So anyway, advocate, right? So fun thing about this word, it's a type of eggnog, and it says it's very good at nourishing your throat. So, who does a lot of talking? Yeah. Oh, like yourself? Yeah. Oh, oh, nice, nice. Advocates. Like, like, yes, advocates. And what does an advocate do? Um, chat talks. They're like lawyers. Exactly. Yes, precisely. So, a lawyer, right? And another term for that is an advocate. And lawyers were famous for drinking a whole bunch of this stuff so they could keep talking. And that's why they named the thing advocat. It's just that because the ah sound, right, and Dutch, they took the A-T-E that you'd see in like English, and they turned it into an A-A-T, Advocat. Okay. And you have words like Radzal, right? And so Radzal is a legislative assembly. What do you call a place where like a whole bunch of people gather? Uh, a room? A room, you hope. Uh, well, what is like the building that's called the town Yes, town hall. So hall and zal are related. It's just that hall, you have like H-A-L-L, -L, right? So H-A-L-L -L is related to Z-A-A-L, zal. It's fun and interesting and weird, but it's mostly fun. And so you also have words that ended up with the ah sound spelled with an O, right? Like matras or babayan. So a matras is like a, this guy that fires a cannon. And this word is actually coming from French instead of just Germanic. And so that has different roots, which is kind of why you have this sort of a situation. But, yeah? Like, isn't the uniforms the sh soldiers are wearing, like, the French uniforms? Mm -hmm. and, and you can kind of see why. And then, one thing you do notice about, like, if you're confused about whether to spell it with an A-A, -A or just an A or an O, is just think about the word and look at the sound, right? It's pretty simple. Somebody say this word. Hogars. 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 Right? So, pronunciation symbols. And the other one. Somebody say that one. Rodzal. Rodzal. So you have a word that sounds like two ahs. Let's look at this one, right? Babayan. It's a much shorter sound. Ah versus ah. And although that's not like a very official rule, like set in stone, you can kind of use that to tell whether it's going to be Rodzal, like A-A, -A, or just Babayan, B-O. Okay? Does that kind of make sense? Okay. And then after the oo sound, after the ah sound, you say oo. Because you have oos and ahs, right? Yeah. Like the zoo. And just like that, you have zoo in words like water zooey. Have you guys seen this word before? No. No, yes? Okay. So water zooey is a stew of chicken or seafood or vegetables. It's a stew, it's food, right? And it's like watery, it comes from the word water. And you have zooey, Z-O-O, -O, and then an I. 
Does anyone want to f try to figure out where the word Ruby grass comes from? Grass? Yes, grass. Awesome. Anything else? Roots. Roots. So what color is this? Red. Yes. So Rui comes from red. So red turned into OO. And, and so the U sound is going to be mostly OO, except for some random words like Galyun and Avonbloom. These two are like exceptions, and they're really cool words. So let's look at Avonbloom, right? Can you take a guess about what words that comes from? Yeah. Bloom. Bloom, yes. And how do you spell that in English? B-L-O-O-M. Yes, exactly. So you have B-L-O-O-M in English. B-L-O-O-M. And how do you spell that here in Dutch? B-L-O-O-M. Yeah. So it's kind of weird, but you have an O-E sound in words like oven. And here's the other interesting part. So the oven, right? Oven comes from evening. Because it's probably a flower that tends to bloom in the evening. And that's why it's called oven bloom. And you have galyun. Does anyone know a fancy word for a ship? Galleon. Yes. Awesome. So let's write that on the board. Who wants to try to spell galleon? Let's go ahead. G-A-L-L -L. G-A-L-L Yes, G-A-L-L-E-O-N Now, this is a fish, right? Not a ship. And that is why you want to make sure you're asking the definition at a spelling bee, right? But this one is Galyud, and it's actually not O-O. It's an O-E. And what's the other tricky part of the, about this word? The silent J. Yes. So the J makes a Y sound. So you have a L and then an O, and in the middle you have a J that makes a Y sound. So you have Galyun. But then other words, mostly, you can just put an OO in there and it makes the O sound. So like spore, right? So what is spore? A uh, footprint? Yeah, so if you're like a Boy Scout or a Girl Scout, you might have seen that encounter this. So spore is like things like paw prints, right? Tracks that an animal leaves. And then after ahs and oohs, you have eyes, because you use your eyes to see. But anyway, this also clues you into the silent J, because that's like a thing that's sprinkled throughout Dutch. So just like you had an L and an O making the liu sound, here you have an I and a J making the I sound. Just an I. It's like a silent J. So, someone say this word. So, let's take this piece by piece. First, you have an I with a line over it, right? What sound does that make? Rye. I, right? So, rye. And you have a KS, so rikes. Okay. And then over here, it's like yikes, except rikes. And over here, you have dalder, right? Yeah, rikes dalder. Now, somebody take a guess about what word this comes from. A coin. Dollar. Dollar, right? And so that's really cool because the spelling looks nothing like the word dollar, right? <laughs> but it sounds like it. Exactly. But shouldn't dollar come from dollar, not dollar come from dollar? Kind of. So if you go back to like the language chart, right? They kind of went different directions after it came from German, taller. So German ow, actually had the word dollar as taller, so like T-A-L-E-R, T-A-L-E-R. And that came from the name of a place where they started making the first like money, like dollars. And it was called a dollar. And then when that went into English, we got the word dollar, like D-O-L-L-A-R. And then when that went into Dutch, that became dollar. D-A-A-L-D-E-R. It's kind of weird, right? But that's why they all sound really similar. It's just that you have to know exactly what the, the tricky patterns are in this specific language to be able to come up with the spelling D-A-A-L-D-E-R. Because otherwise, you probably wouldn't have gotten that, right? But now you will, which is awesome. Yay, go at you. So, uh, tricks that you can use in this word. Hint, they're colored. Uh, 
What yes. Like so the I, right? The I has an IJ, and the A ah has an AA. We encountered that before, right? Anyone remember any other words from that slide that had the ah sound and AA? Yeah, babayan. Babayan, good. And what was the babayan? Uh, the monkey thing. Yes, the monkey thing. Good. Mm -hmm. Except sometimes the I isn't IJ, and there's only like one or two cases, like skite. So skite is weird because the I sound is a UY, but there's another thing you can notice, right? How do you say this word? Like so. And how do you say this one? So this one, the A has two dots, right? The A has two dots, that's the ah sound. So this is Rhystoffel, okay? But anyway, both of these have long eyes. That one is just skite. So it's like a smaller sound. It has a shorter sound, if you can kind of imagine it. And that one comes from the word scout. Scout became scute, which became skite. Because that scout, in this case, doesn't mean like the guy who goes looking for stuff. This scout comes from shoot. Because what does a really fast boat look like it's doing? Shooting. Exactly. It's shooting across the ocean. And that's how you got the word skite. It's kind of like a way to help you remember the way that it's spelled. You why. Because if you remember the story, that helps you make the connections, right? And this one. Another one of like the weird stuff that Dutch does. So what was one of the weird stuff that Dutch does that you learned so far? Uh, the AA. The AA. Changing like the letters and making them different sounds. Yeah, changing the letters when you have the same sound. Anything else? The J becoming the Y. Another one of the weird things is right here. The G makes a H sound. So like this word, right? It's actually not Berghan. It's actually Berghan. So everybody say that. Berghan. Yeah, so it's like a weird sort of H sound. But it's spelled with a G. And so Berg actually means mountain. And then Han. Think about what the thing is. Word. What do you think Han means? Hen. Hen. Good. So this is basically a mountain hen. Uh. Is this weird black bird looking thing? Can so, it fly though? Yeah. Fly. Thankfully, yeah. And so Bear Khan has a silent G, the, not, not a silent G, but it makes like the K sound. And it has the A, ah, the A A. And apart from that, it's pretty straightforward, right? It's just a B-E-R, an H, and an N. And so if you didn't know how to spell this, it would be pretty complicated, right? Bear Khan, and you might spell it with like a K or an H-O-N. But now that you know that Dutch does these very specific weird things, like the K sound making a G and the A sound making an AA, now you know how to spell bear Khan. Awesome. And that one. Sometimes you can have shifts. So you know how we were saying like Dutch to German made some weird things happen? Mm -hmm. The same thing happens when you had Dutch words that went into Afrikaans. So English, for some reason, picked up both of them. They're like, hey, if we're picking up one, why not pick up the other two? So we got Lichte, which is like this flat open field. And we also got Lachte, which is the same flat open field, except from Afrikaans. One of them has an E sound, so it has an EE. -E, and one of them has an A sound, so it has an AA. Doubled vowels, still the same, you know, Dutch and Afrikaans. It's just they changed the vowel. And so Lichte is a flat field. Guess what they did? I'm sorry? It looks more like a savanna or Yeah, it looks kind of like a savanna, right? Because you see them in Africa. Because where is Afrikaans? Africa. Yeah. And so it's, it's a type of broad, like, valley field, right? So what would happen if you took the word field and made it Dutch? Field. How, how do you spell it? F-E-E-L-D. -E Someone said it was a V, and we'll get to that. Anyway, in the middle, we have the A sound and the U sound, but now we have the OW sound. It's like if this dude and whatever his stick is came and hit you on the head. You would say OW, right? But the OW sound 
is usually just OU, except if it's at the end of a word. And then you can't just have an OU, right, at the end of a word. So they finish it up, wrap it with a bow, that's a W. So you have a whole bunch of words like Buchenhout and Scout, and then you have Scow. So, yeah? Um, for Scout in the middle, it sounds like a patrol scout. Exactly, and that's exactly so, what it is. So I'm guessing that it means that a Dutch soldier on the side. Yeah, a scout is a Dutch sheriff. So it's, it's just a patrol scout, right? Except you're spelling the scout with a S-C-H. So instead of just having like an S-C like you'd have in English, just S-C-O-U-T, and then marker. Instead of having S-C-O-U-T, you have S-C-H-O-U-T. And then the same thing with scout. You have an S-C-H. Buchenhout is interesting. Tell me one pattern that you see in Buchenhout. Yeah? The O-E. So the O-E makes the O sound, right? Yeah? Sounds like Buchenhout. Sounds like Brokenhout? Kind of. So a Buchenhout is a small tree. A scout is a scout. And a scout is related to skite. Yes, it's a boat. Good. Now, we get to the feld part. Feld, field, feld, field. Now, what is a German car company? There's many. Yes, Volkswagen. And what does it mean? The car for the people. So Volkswagen, right? Folk, people, and wagon. Wagon is car. So just like that, you have folk, right? Volksrad. Does anyone remember the word from way before that we said is like a town hall? Yeah, Radzal. What do you see here? A Volksrad. Volksrad. Interesting thing. The V is pronounced with an F. So, it still sounds like field, right? It's feld, except you spell it with a V. And that thing is consistent. You have Volksrad. It has a V instead of an F, but it sounds like an F. And so, what do you think rod means? That actually doesn't sound like any other English word. Does it mean like something? Place? So, rod actually means like council. So like meeting, right? Or like a group of people. So, like a folk, a people council. Basically, yeah. So, a folksrod is a council of the people. And what's the place that they meet? City hall. Um, Town hall. Radzal. Radzal, right? So, let's look at this. You have Volksrad, right? And you have Radzal. So, what are the pieces you break this up into? Volksrad. Uh, Volksrad. So Zal, what does Zal mean? Uh, hall, like in place. Hall. What does Rod mean? Uh, Council. And then what is folks? People. Yeah, so it's folk, F-O-L-K, or people. So all you need to know to be able to spell this word is that folk has a V. So it's folks Rod, right? And then, Two more tricks. So there's three tricks in the entire word. First, the fa sound for the V. Next is the AA, right? For the A. And what's the third tricky part? Look at the word. Think about how it's pronounced with the pronunciation right below it. Right after the AA. D? Yes. And how is the word pronounced? Folksrot. So it's pronounced with a T. Folksrot. Not with a B sound, but it's spelled with the letter D, not the letter D. T. Yeah. So the D makes the T sound. So over here, right? Bushfelt. How do you pronounce V E L D? Felt. 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 Kind of like the, the felt stuff, like the fabric. But in this case, it means field. It's just V E L D. And the bush is fine. It's just bush. Oh, because oh, it, it looks like um, trees 
It's like the eight trick trees are clamped together to make it look like fish. Yeah. Now, the scusa. We talked about this with boats, right? And here's some more examples. You have a skulker. S-C-H-O-K-K-E-R. The rest of it is fairly straightforward. Yeah? There's a lot of names for boats in German. I need that. There are. And what did we say ne the Netherlands has a lot of? Water. Exactly. Which makes sense, right? They would have boats if they have a lot of water, right? And explorers. Yeah, and explorers. So another word with a scup is a skipper key. That's a dog. It's like a husky. Well, it's kind of like a husky, I guess. It has those pointy ears. And you have that word. So it's like a food. It's basically a pigeon pee. It's a kind of pee. Kacha. That is where the ch sound is spelled with a tj in Dutch. Instead of like a ch like you would normally. So how do you spell ketchup? K E T C H U P. Yeah, K E T C H U P. Probably don't have to write that up there. But in Dutch, the ch sound that you would spell with like a T C H in English is spelled with a T J. And the same thing with a double ch. T J. And double, how do you spell double in English? D O U B L E. So, like double, you just D O U B L E, right? Here, it's D U B B E L. Some of the stuff you just have to get used to. Like they're doubling the bees. Now, we can probably go on to Afrikaans now. So if Afrikaans seems like weird, just remember it's basically Dutch. With some adaptations. What do you have a lot of in Africa that you probably don't in the Netherlands? Animals. Stuff like this. If it was just full of water, you probably wouldn't have these. You would have more things like galloons, right? Like fish. What, what was the galloon? The boat. The boat. The fish. Uh, the, boat. fish. the fish. Oh. Yeah. So, buck means buck, right? Just like buck in English means deer, right? So, buck is buck in Afrikaans, and it means a male antelope. An antelope is kind of like a deer, kind of like a goat. It's like somewhere in the middle. And there's a whole bunch of them, and they're like different types. So this one is a clip bok. The ka sound is spelled with a K, not a C. And you can see that in the beginning of the word and the end of the word. Yeah? The Oriok is, is I, I forgot the name, but it was the, it's, I think it's the type of meat that a cheetah eats. Probably. Cheetahs would probably eat any of those. Precisely. Um. And so, what, where do you see this? The Reebok. Oh, 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 yeah. Glad you made the connection. Yes, because, yeah. They run fast. They, they, they would like you to make the connection that the animal is fast, I, I guess. I don't know. And then you have some weird animals, right? Like over there, you can't see it gets cut off, is the steenbok. In the tradition of doubling the vowels, just like give me another word that where the vowel is doubled. Oh, uh, let's see here. Double in Dutch? Yeah, uh, double a had a doubled consonant, a so D U V E L. Um, the AA, a -A, right? What's a, the what's a word where they double the AA? Uh, DD? Uh, Rodzal. Rodzal, yeah. Rodzal. It's right up there. And then there was like the um, E E one, I forgot. The yeah, word. there was the E E one. Just like Steenbok over there. S T E E N B O K. So the Bach is always the same, it's just the front part that changes. So, yeah? Would a female one have a different name? That's, a, that's actually a great question. And so, generally speaking, the word refers to like the type of animal. So you probably would refer to it as the same word. It's just that if you're like talking about them specifically, you might use like a male Reebok or a female Reebok. But what you take away from this is, what's the ending for an antelope? Buck. Buck, yeah. And, and how do you spell it? Be okay. Yes, great. I think it's time for a movie. Yay! Yay! Oh, you're spelling. It's actually not me spelling. It's from a very uh, helpful person who recorded Springbox. Oop, no, don't do that. Springing, because that's what they do. Jumping, springing, If I can figure out how to. 
So let's come over here. Can you see that kind of like? Yeah, it's like springing. It starts. It starts running, and it just starts like springing. <laughs> See, look at that. It's just like bouncing. Like, that's its favorite thing to do, is just bounce. That's why they called it the spring block. Because it springs around. Yes. Well, we don't see that, because that would be too gory, and that would be sad. See, they're, they're just like running around, springing. See, it can run. It just wants to like spring, like a kangaroo. It's just a. Anyway, oh, we're in Moscow. Awesome. So, the next thing, right? Where you have a whole bunch of like salt water, you probably don't have a bunch of like trees and grasses and shrubs and flowers, right? But you do in the veld in Africa. So, boom means tree, right? And it's just boom. Like, boom, there was an explosion and a seed sprouted into a plant. Amazing. But, there are all these different kinds of words that have boom, right? One of them is really weird, it's like the exception. This word, that looks like a whole bunch of cactuses, just attached to like, uh, it's, like a, it's like a cactus bouquet, kind of. And that one, instead of being pronounced boom, it's pronounced boom. So the O with a line on it is like a long O sound, it's a boom. And another one that I think is really cool is that one on the right. It's called a wonder boom, but it's pronounced Vonderboom. Yeah? Um, now, the word for Vonderboom, mm -hmm. it kind of sounds like the word Bambus. Interesting. Interesting first. But anyway, this is really cool because you see those like blobs, right? Yeah. Are they fruit? They're kind of like fruit. And where would you normally see like a fruit? A tree. A tree. But where on the tree? Uh, on the branches. branches. On the branches. You would normally see like the fruit at the end of the branch where you have like flowers, right? Yeah. Uh -huh. This one, the fruits just randomly appear at the middle of the stem. What? Okay. Like at the middle of the tree? Trunk? No, not the trunk. Oh, like the branch. Yeah. And that's why they called it the Wonder Boom. Because it was like wonderfully weird. Oh. <laughs> but wonder is wonder. Anyway. And then that one, right? Vitaboom. What do you think the first part of the word came from? Vital? I think I heard it. White. white. Yes, white. So what color are the leaves? White. White. White, white and green. And white is vita. It, it looks like white. You just took the H and replaced it with a T. So you have W-I-T-T-E, right? And that's vita. Why? Because the W is pronounced with a V sound. Yes. And then over here in the middle, those are really pretty flowers, right? Yeah. And so cur means choice, because it's like the best tree, because it has like awesome flowers. Yeah? Um, but why in Afrikaans is the white sound pronounced with a W? Because it's like Dutch, because Afrikaans came from Dutch. Exactly. So, Afrikaans came from Dutch, which came from German. And so, all along the way, you have this pattern of taking letters like W, right? And pronouncing it with a V, instead of like a W. It's only kind of when you came to English that you, you took the V and made it into a W sound instead of a V sound. And, and sometimes it went the forwards way, sometimes it went the backwards way. But that's kind of the end result. Over here, what do you notice about this word? Durnboom. Durnboom, right? Sounds like thorns. Yeah. And so what do we double? The O. The o. Exactly. So instead of being just like D-U-R-N, right, for Durnboom, it's actually D-O-O-R-N. Boom. That's pretty cool, right? It's just annoying. <laughs> Sometimes it can seem that way, but trust me, they're way more annoying different things. This actually falls into place most of the time. Words like four trucker, right? Yeah. So we doubled the O. So what does four trucker mean? Uh, probably some be traveling guy. Night. An expedition guy. Where do you where do you get like the idea for expedition? Apart from the picture. Trekker. Trekker, right? So if you're trekking, what are you doing? 
Yeah, you're like, you're like hiking or going on a journey, right? We're going on a trip. Anyway, so four, right? What does four sound like in English? Four. Four. For you. Apart from the the F O U R, there's F O R E, right? And then if you're not considering the golf definition, you have F O R E as a root that means before, right? Just think of the, about the word before that has F O R E in it. And V O O R is the Dutch version of four. So four trekkers are like the pioneers that came to a land way before all of the other people. Uh, <laughs> and then you have words like a felt spoon, right? And the picture is kind of hard to see, but it's a shoe. And so what do you think schoon means? Shoe. 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 Exactly. Because if you take out the C and E and the rest of the letters, it's just shoe. Yeah. So it's almost like shoe. It's just schoon. And how, how do you spell the sk sound? S-C-H. S-C-H, exactly. So you have S-C-H, and you have an O-E. It's kind of like the Galyun, remember? Yeah. yeah, question? So what does Galyun mean? Because it spelled in Dutch and Teal. So what does Galyun mean? What would you think? It, exactly. It's the same thing. And so a Velskun, you would wear it in the field. It's supposed to be a heavy, like, tough shoe. It's like boots. And then boots. So it's a field shoe. Does that make sense, right? Yeah. You would have like field shoes. And then look at the first word on the left. It's like a little animal, right? Mm -hmm. That lives in the trees. That lives in the trees. And why would you think it lives in the trees? Because the boom roots mean tree. Exactly. I'm glad you noticed. So boom means tree, right? And so an animal that's called a boom dasi, especially if you notice the picture would live in a tree, because it has the word for tree in the word itself. Same as boom slime. Yes, so boom slime. What's the part that's different from boom dasi and boom slime? Um, the G is silent, sort of? Oh, like slow so, so one of them has dasi and one of them has slime, right? Slime. So dasi is like the animal, and slime is snake. snake. Exactly. So this is a tree snake. You can kind of see the leaf, too. So, slang, you have other words that have slang, and they all are different types of snakes. That makes sense, right? Yeah. So you have like these parts that fit together, kind of like Latin and Greek, how you have roots. Here, it's just like whole words that you're taking and swapping. Ah. A fruit ganger was an uh, insect. And so over here, beast. We took... The English word beast, right? B E A S T. Abandon your conception of the E sound being spelled with an E A, and instead think about it as an E E. Just like how Volksrad is A A, beast is E E. The only one of them looks more like a deer. Yeah. And a horse collide. Exactly. So that's kind of like the African savanna summarized in two things. You have wildebeest and antelopes. But wildebeest, right? It looks kind of like an ox and a cow and a deer combined. And the other one is a hard beast. Yeah, it does, it kind of. Wild. But so, all of them are various types of beasts. So, what would you possibly think this is? A wild, a wild, a wild beast. beast. Amazing, a wild beast. Or a wild so imagine the first person that saw one of these and you know, it's like, wow, a wild beast. In its natural wilderness. And, Drawing off of the tradition. How's the other way to say this? Wildebeest. Exactly. So just like how you take the V sound and pronounce it with a... You take the W and you pronounce it with a V. And then cop means head. Cop. So let's look at that word. It's called the dick hop. Because what does thick sound like? Thick. Thick. It has a thick head. It actually has a really huge head in comparison to its body and a really huge eye in comparison to its head when you consider it's a pretty small bird. But that's how you get that. And the word dude scop, right? Down there. Uh, it's like this weird animal looking thing. It's like an eel, but it's, that it's a, like a fish. Isn't that, but the deep pronunciation and the symbol is that, so is it more of a dutska? So the U has two dots on it, right? 
So if it only had one dot, it would be a dutska. Because it has two, it's a dutska. Okay? And over here, you have a gildekop, which is a disease of sheep. And that comes from gil, which means yellow. And then dikop, which means thick, thick head. So in this case, it wasn't the bird, it was a disease. So it's like a yellow, thick head. You probably don't want your sheeps to have yellow, thick heads. <laughs> and so in Afrikaans, you have a whole bunch of animals, right? Because we established the fact that... Is a, is a frog, basically? Yeah. So it's a platana, and it's the African clawed frog. It's a fancy word. Does it have claws on it? Yeah, it does have claws. Does it scratch So, a fun fact about the African clawed frog. It doesn't have a tongue. So it uses its flippers, its claws, to shovel food into its mouth. Does its claws hurt when it hits you with it? I'm not sure. I've never touched one. So then you can. So, now you know that how to spell the African clawed frog, right? Platana? And you have words like the aardvark. Pretty We've awesome. seen this before, right? Yeah. yeah. Texas. Yes. And we have armadillos too, but that's Spanish. But anyway, you have a king clip, that's another type of fish. I want to look like an eel. Yeah, it kind of does look like an eel. Does it, does it have electricity flow up in its body? I don't think this one has uh, electricity. Yeah. And you have these two things, right? They look kind of like deers. Uh, I mean, zebras. Uh, I'm sorry, the word. Okay, but then why do they have different names? Are they because different types of zebras? They're kind of different, yeah. So the quagga is different entirely from an yeah, it just has a little bit of stri uh, the stripes. And, and then a dao is a very specific type of zebra. It's called the Birchall's zebra. And I actually got this word in a B, too, at yes. Houston PBS. Dao. D-A-U-W. It's kind of weird. But it's time for another movie. Yay! Oh, Bach So, the Bach Makiri, right? Duet? What? And they I'm kind singing? of sing. Exactly. So. Let's make the buzzing sound happen. And I can close my Oh, that's So it's like they're, they're tweeting out a duet, right? And try to hear the word Bach Makiri. Oh, Do you hear it? It's the bird on the left that makes the sound for Bach Makiri. See? It's pretty cool. And now, German. The last yeah. One. yeah. So, in this intermission, I have a few housekeeping things to cover. So, next week is Asian languages, right? Who's read Spell It? The little booklet from your school beat, yeah. So, does anyone remember like an example of a word from the Asian languages section? Yeah? Anyway. Jinkana, yeah? Yeah? Ninja? Tanha, like udon, right? Fairly straightforward words, right? Sushi. Sushi. Pretty straightforward words, right? So, we are going to do words that will breach your perceptions of the simpleness of words from Spell It. Which is fun and exciting, right? Challenging words. So we're going to cover things like, you know, Chinese and Japanese, of course. But then we're also going to take a trip into other languages. In the associated area, you have words like... Yeah, you have Vietnamese, you have Malaysian, you have other Indian languages, a whole bunch of those. We're going to cover a little bit of them. So things like Chinese, right, are not very related to languages like English. Various Indian languages, surprisingly enough, are actually relatively closely related to languages like English and German. It's really interesting. But we're going to cover all of those next week, so please come watch. And on the very last workshop, we are going to have a spelling bee. Yes. And... An amazing thing about it is that it's not going to be a normal B because if you misspell, you don't get out. Yeah. Which is awesome. You get to keep going for the entire length of the B. And we're going to give you points if you spell the word correctly. So you don't have to worry about getting wait. out if you spell the word wrong. So wait, do, but do we There are going to be prizes for the winners based on how many points you get. Oh. And every single person, if you've attended the workshops, you are going to get a personalized certificate for coming to the workshops and it's going to have my signature on it and Miss Hicks signature on it. Amazing! Yes. Would you like a certificate? Yes! Yes! I'm just only looking forward to this Awesome. So,
come to the last session and participate in the spelling bee. It's going to be a lot of fun. Awesome. Now, let's do German. So, I'll try to cover as much German as I can in the little bit that I have left. German is actually a language where it actually makes a lot of sense. There are just a whole bunch of different tricky patterns that you can look at. And so, I'm not going to be able to cover all of the things that are like possible at all in German, which I've tried to do with some of the other languages. I still can't get a scope of the entire thing. But, if you guys want, at the end of this, we can take a show of hands and probably cover like five or ten minutes more of German on the last day. Kind of going back to it. Because I think it's a pretty cool language. So, let's get started. German stuff. Oh, what's that? That's German Shepherd. Yes, yeah, a German Shepherd. You might notice it has the word German in it. And what's this one? Dachshund. Yes, exactly. It's a dachshund. You have famous musical compositions, uh, the, the, the composers like Bach and Beethoven. And you might notice, what's the word for this dog? Dachshund. And what is the word for this dude? Bach. Bach. They both have the K sound as a CH, right? Interesting. Pattern in German. We'll notice those all the way through. Uh, famous architecture like the Brandenburg Gate. You have famous fairy tales like Grimm's fairy tales. Uh, Deutschland. We were discussing how the ger German word for Germany is Deutsch. Yep. Yeah. Um, did hamburger also come from German? Kind of. So Hamburg is a place in Germany, and they're kind of related. And then there's Cologne. Yes, there is Cologne also. And you have like yeah. German and Fran France and all that stuff. So, like we were saying, you know, Luxembourg in the middle, all lonely. But it's okay, because this map has Luxembourg. Amazing, it kind of makes up for the picture of the being. Yeah. Uh, and then you have various things, like it's cold, so you have skiing. You have uh, Alpine Brow House and uh, Cuckoo Clocks. Cool Cuckoo Clocks. Oh, what? So, let's get started. How many German words are there in dictionary? Our standard trivia. Oh. Yeah. Yes. Very close. Someone want to get to down to the hundred. Yeah. 2,135. What? A little bit more. It's actually 2,400. So, 2,400 German words in the dictionary, Wait, many of them two, have to do with... But that's 2,400. Mm -hmm. You yeah. said down to the hundreds. <laughs> no, no, sorry, not, not the hundreds. hundreds. The hundred, yeah. So the hundreds, not the hundred. Okay, so you have a whole bunch of words for like science, you have music, you have architecture, all that stuff. So, so let's get started. German. The Schuss sound, as I just said, architecture, right? That one. That's a Schloss. It's a German castle or a manor house. And the name of that particular castle uh, is not a word in the dictionary, but, it, but it's uh, Neuschwanstein. And you can actually look up pictures of it. Oh, I forgot the marker as usual. But you can look up pictures of it. It's really cool. Uh, and so the word for that is, and I'll write it here, N-E-U-S-C-H-W-A-N-S-T-E-I-N. It's kind of a long word, but it's pretty cool. And then this word, Schiller. A lustrously or resplendently iridescent coloration out of a beetle. So, what do they mean by that definition? Oh, uh, is that like a color? Uh, a weird colored beetle? It's shiny and colorful. Like Like this. Yeah, like some butterfly wings, right? This is a really cool picture. And then you have Schnecke, which is a cinnamon bun. So, Schnecke in German, the word itself, actually doesn't mean cinnamon bun. Does anyone want to guess what it means? Any guesses what the word Schnecke means in German? It doesn't mean cinnamon bun. I mean, it can, but... Circle? Close. It's a snail or a slug. Or snake of a Doesn't a cinnamon bun kind of look like this, the shell of a snail? Yeah. Because it's like spiraling, right? Hmm. Or snake. Or a snake, snake kind of. Coil. Yeah, it's a snake, right? And so, take away from this slide, the sh cell is spelled with S-C-H. And there are many, many more examples of this that you'll see also, and I'll point them out. So. Let's go forward. Da -da -da. Kind of throwing words at you, kind of like Italian, right? But it's because these patterns don't always have like pictures. Because like Nietzschean, right? I'm not going to bore you with a picture of the guy. But Nietzschean means relating to a German philosopher. Has anybody, have you heard of the guy's name, Nietzsche? No. Yeah. So you, you'll probably hear about like Nietzsche and Kant and Freud and those people. But what do you notice? The E sound makes the IE spelling. Same thing with Wiesenboden. And like Dutch, what do we do with the W? Uh, v. Yes. The W is pronounced with a V. So when you hear V, think W. Right? Wiesenboden, right? It's a type of soil. That's weird. So, so what? Things to notice. Boden is fairly simple, right? That part. 
It's pretty straightforward. But the first part, Wiesen, is the part with all the trickiness. Let's go at it piece by piece. What's the first letter you have? W. Yeah, and what sound does it make? V. V. V, exactly. So you have the V sound, and then you have the E sound. And, taking it from the slide, how do you spell the E sound? I. -E. Yes, in most cases, except for like this one random word, rutil. That one has an I, it just likes to be unique. Independent. Yeah, like, because it's a red mineral, right? It thinks it's all special. So, Wiesenboden, right? Right after the E sound, what is there? An S. Yes, but what's weird about it? Z. Yes, it sounds like a Z. It sounds like a Z. Tricky thing in German. When you hear a Z, it's usually an S. So, fun fact to know, a very useful thing in German spelling. When you hear a Z, it's often an S. Kriegspiel, a war game. Krieg means war. What's another word that has Krieg in it? Blitzkrieg. Blitzkrieg, exactly, and you've seen that before, right? What does Blitz mean? Fast. Yeah, like fast. You have that in like football plays too, like Blitz. <laughs> and so Spiel means game, right? There are other words that have Spiel, in it, Spiel or Spiel in them. Like Glockenspiel, right? Glockenspiel is another German word. There's also Bahnspiel, which is sort of related. You have words like Glockenspiel, right? How do you spell that? So, and then that's the E sound, but if you have the I sound, like the long I, like I, that is an E-I. So somebody at the beginning said Fraulein, right? Yes. Fraulein, E-I, for the I sound. Same thing with Meister Singer, M-E-I, for the Meister part. It's kind of like the word Baster, but it's Meister, and for the I sound, it's an E-I. And you have Einkorn. What do you think Einkorn means? Uh, type corn? Type of corn? Close. So Einkorn, and I'll give you the official definition, is a one-grained wheat. So corn, in this case, means wheat. It's like similar stuff kind of. And then Ein, what does Ein mean? One. Yes. One-grained wheat. Ein. What is, uh, fun, uh, fun stuff, what is two? Zwei. So, uh, my music teacher used to yell at us when he was mad, Eins, zwei, drei! So you have E-I-N, which is one, you have Z-W-E-I, which is two, and then you have D-R-E-I, which is three. What does that sound like? Tre. Tre. Or tres. They're all related. Why? That's a bit farther back, because this three stuff goes way back into, like, long, long ago in that tree of languages you saw. So you have, like, Spanish, which is not that closely related to, like, German, Exhibiting things like tres, right, and uno. Uno is similar to ein. It all works out. They're all the Indo-European branch, and that's how you kind of get the uh, numbers. Numbers are pretty consistent across languages. Um, anyway, so back to here. You had I, and you have nice, right? Have you guys seen this word before? Nice. Yeah. Might have seen it in like science class for like rocks. Fun thing about this one. For some reason, the N sound has a G N. The SS is weird also. Instead of being just like N E I S, if you knew that I made the E I spelling, it would be two letters off. There's a G and another S. And then Zeitgeist. Zeitgeist means a spirit of the time. Does anyone know any other word that has Geist in it? Um, poltergeist. Yes, good. A poltergeist. And what is a poltergeist? A ghost. A ghost, basically. You might even notice. The similarity between the word ghost and the, 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 the word. Yes! So, you have poltergeist, right? P-O-L-T-E-R-G-E-I-S-T. That's similar to zeitgeist. They're both spirits. One of them has to do with time, so it's more like pop culture, and the other one has to do with like spooking you out. Anyway, time to test your knowledge of the German. So, I'll let you know. Some of these words are actually quite tricky. So, the first one, Zwieback. Who wants to try that? Zwieback. Yeah. Z W I E B A C K. So the E sound, right? Making the I E. But, what's the tricky part about this word? The Z sound? Exactly. 
So you might have noticed that before I said the Z sound often makes an S. Now it makes a Z. The rest of it is fairly simple. Back, B-A-C-K. What about diesel? Oh. So, it's even easier. Yeah. Yes, amazing. So, D-I-E-S-E-L. And here, the Z sound makes the S, like over here, where it gives you conveniently the answer. And then, next word. So, before we had another example of this, but I don't think we talked about it. Minolete. You can probably use your Dutch stuff too. Minolete. That's a tricky word. It's a song in the style of aristocratic German lyric poets and musicians. Minolete. Yeah. Close. So Minolete is M-I-N-N-E-L-I-E-D. So, if we ignore the beginning of this word, it's just leet, right? So leet has the E sound, the I-E, as characteristic of this entire slide. At the end, the T sound is a D. Did we talk about this before? Yeah. A little bit, maybe. Yeah. So the D makes the T sound, right? Leet. And in the beginning, the minute is kind of tricky. It's like M-I-N-N-E. And then I'll spare you the trouble for the next one. It's eigenvector. It's like a vector, if you've seen those. And then eigen, how it gives you in the other part. So, we talked about einkorn, right? Mm -hmm. So, counter means pebble. So if you have a dry counter, what would it mean? Dry counter. If you go by the number over there. Oh, three pebbles. Yes. So, three pebbles, except there's just one pebble, so it might be like sides, right? Three-faced pebble. A three-faced pebble, because it has like three sides. And that's spelled just like the number up there, and then with counter at the end, K-A-N-T-E-R. And then caffeine. Yeah. Another F and an E-I. So, this is pretty much the one exception to the rule that the I sound is E-I. Here, you have the E sound, and it's spelled with an E-I, and it's not pronounced caffeine. Caffeine. Yeah. Although, caffeine is sometimes pretty fine. But, caffeine. So, let's look at some more examples of this. Unfortunately, dry canter is has it inverted for some reason. Sorry about that. But this should be an E-I. Over there, it's Zriback, I-E. You have nice, that's a picture of the word we saw before. Wiesenboden, remember the soil? When we talked about how the W makes the V sound? Yes. That's the soil. It's quite a vivid picture of dirt. And then over there, I told you I wouldn't bore you with the guy named Nietzsche. I lied. There's the dude, Friedrich Nietzsche. Yes? Um, I know you said it would be a word game, but I thought you would be like, Unfortunately, we tend to avoid for the for the prospect of uh, viewership. Yes, Kriegsfield. Look, it's like chess except with a cannon. It's even more violent. There, have your violence. It's like the the dude in the French uh, uniforms shooting the cannon back in Dutch. And here you have Rutil. It thinks it's really unique. Why? Because of the eye. It's also red. Yeah, it's, it's, it, it's kind of like a ruby. So, more words. The F sound. The F sound is, yes, foosball. Good, foosball. But it's weird because you have words like Pfefferkuchen, right? Pfefferkuchen, for some reason they decided they were going to use two different ways to spell the F sound in one word. It is a bit simpler than that, though. See this FF, right? It's kind of hard to put FF at the beginning of the word and actually say it. Try it. FF for cooking. Right? So instead of that, they took one of the Fs and flipped it around and made it a P. So now you have Pfeffer cooking. If you're trying to say the P, Pfeffer cooking. Right? We're sounding just like that. It's only inside the middle of a word where you can have the F sound making an FF. Just like F and pincher. You have a vowel at the beginning to start you off. So you go up to say Fen pincher. It's affin picture. And then back to the V and W interchangeably stuff. V makes the F sound, just like in Dutch, right? So, verstand. And then the D makes the T sound. Verstand. 
the S because Dutch think uh, the, the German think Achtung. The S makes the shut sound, so like stunt. It's very like harsh. Now the V. We talked about this, right? Wiesend. Now Wehrmacht. What do you think that means? Um, uh, our forces of Germany from 1935 to 1934. <laughs> There's also, also like, like from like the World War II. Maybe. Yeah, kind of. The World War. From, uh, what do you think this means? This part. Like Macht. What do you think Macht means? Our forces. Might. Like strength. There's also. We are a strong army. They would like you to believe, right? So, Macht for might, and then Wehr. It's like war and world mixed together. <laughs> You're saying something? Uh, Russia or Germany. Yeah, we're going to beat Germany. Yes. They have the language uh, too. Yes, good, 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 good transition. So, the Persian army was the Landwehr. L-A-N-D-W-E-H-R. What's the similarity? I'm pointing at it. Wehr. Wehr, exactly. So you had Wehrmacht here, and you have Landwehr here. Same thing, the D is pronounced like a T, so Landwehr. Who thinks no? Now, sometimes you have these consonant clusters, back with like the, the Sch. You have Angst, Schadenfreude, Schnauzer. Who's seen a Schnauzer? Yeah. Yeah, it's like a little dog, right? They're awesome. But, Sch. Where we talk about the Sch sound? S-C-H, exactly. Same thing in Schadenfreude, right? It's sh it's shot it's shot instead of dirt. Yes. Shot the shiz. And so that's why you have like the S C H and all of those. And they're like a cluster of consonants. So you guys wanna try some words? Yeah. 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 Awesome. So Shifley. It's a machine that makes like lace out of chemicals. Who wants to try spelling it? Yeah? Use the patterns. S H I F L I E. Close. So, what was the pattern for the sh sound? S C H. S C H, right? And then after that, it gets kind of tricky. It's actually F F L I. So, when we talk about the words with uh, Affenpinscher and Pfeffernus, how they had the F F, right? So just like that, you've got a beginning, right? So Shifley, F F, and then L I. Hasenpfeffer. Thankfully, you have a word to rely upon. Hasenpfeffer. Anybody else want to try? Yeah. H A Z E N P F E. -E Very close. So, Hazen, right? Yeah, you said about My the Z. Informal rule? S. Exactly. So, the Z sound makes the S. And, just like Pfefferkuchen, that was like a gingerbread cookie, because if you put pepper in cookies without putting pepper in cookies, don't do that. <laughs> uh, but if you substitute ginger for pepper, it makes like a peppery cookie. And you have Pfefferkuchen. Here, you have a stew that has pepper in it. And so, P-F-E-F-F-E-R, same thing, that means pepper. And then Herren Folk, back to German and Volksrad, you have V-O-L-K. Uh, so, does anyone know what Herr means in German? Man or Mr, basically. Uh, and then Wagnerian, it's a German composer. The, the very somber music. So, think about it for a second. Wagnerian. Uh, I'll, I'll give you a hint. It's kind of given away to you. Uh -huh. Oh, I got it now. Yes, over there. Um, Wagnerian? Mm -hmm. W-A-G-N-E-R. Yes. Wagnerian. Yes, great. So, you have the guy named, that looks like Wagner, but it's actually Wagner. Wagnerian. And you just add on the English I-A-N, that's an English suffix, and you get Wagnerian. The next one is a bit trickier. Weltanschauung. It's a pretty tricky word. You see, uh, like, national bees. Welt means world. 
Let's use our patterns. Yeah? Give it a shot. W E L T A N S H A U E N. Close. So, what was the shot pattern again? S C H. Good. So, you have the V with a W, right? Elt. The rest of it is fairly straightforward, just E-L-T in this case, because Welt means world. And then you have Anschau, that's a word on, word on its own. So it's A-N-S-C-H, and until there it's pretty straightforward. And then you, it throws your curveball with a U-U. So some words like this you just have to know. And that's why it shows up in natural spelling bees. And then, here's the trick, once it shows up in natural spelling bees, you know it too. And then Weltpolitik, international politics. It's also given away to you, so you can just see that. Amazing. And we're going to finish up probably, because we've got a few minutes over, um, with some pictures of words. Yay. So, schnapsers, right? Pfefferkuchen, gingerbread cookies, not with pepper, please don't try that. Uh, Wiesent, it's like a wildebeest, just it looks wiser, kind of. Puns. And then Wagnerian. Uh, the sentence for that word that they gave was, uh, at some points, Star Trek Klingon opera is known to be more somber than even the most dramatic Wagnerian melodies. They try to make funny sentences. And then you have Shifley, like the lace. lace. That, yeah, it's like it's like pre-old 3D printing when they didn't have like little 3D printers. They just dumped chemicals onto this process and they made like lace out of plastic. It's pretty cool. So. I think we can finish up now. Uh, before you guys go, let's all take a group picture of all the spellers that were here. Okay. Yes, even the adult spellers. Please. So Asian languages, can somebody find for me where it is on this thing? That's partially a trick question. 